And good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to a Full Compass Full Access webinar. Here in that Full Access webinar series where we bring you the industry experts to talk about the subjects that you want to learn about. And boy, I got to tell you, talk about industry experts today. <clears throat> We've got them, not, not one, not two, but three industry experts on the Yamaha keyboards here and how it applies to you and your house of worship. So let's be, my name is Jim Ripp. I am the manager of technical training and sales development here at Full Compass Systems, coming to you from uh, Control Room One at, live at Full Compass here in Madison, Wisconsin. And let's do some quick uh, housekeeping things here out of the way. Uh, we have a question feature. If you could use this during the webinar, we will answer most of the questions at the end, but if the, those are urgent ones, we absolutely will pop in and, and ask those to both Blake and Tony. A uh, recording of the presentation will be available up on our YouTube channel. And also, at the very end, there is a very short survey. It's two questions. This is how we decide future webinars for everybody. So, uh, without further delay, guys, welcome. We have Blake Angelos and Tony Esqueda from Yamaha. Good to see you guys. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey how's it going? Hello. So, uh, first things first, let's do a quick roundhouse here. Uh, we'll start with you, Blake. Give us kind of a quick, short bio of yourself. Uh, very, very short. Just wh what do you bring to the table to this webinar workshop, actually? Well, um, I think the main thing I bring to this table, especially with regard to Yamaha, is that I've been with this company since 94. I think Tony and I actually started about the same time. Yeah. And then um, we became employees in 99. So 20 years of experience with Yamaha synthesizers and keyboards. Um, as far as my education goes, I have a master's degree in music theory and composition. That's kind of where I was going. And uh, um, But Yamaha kind of uh, became my career and I've been here ever since. So that's pretty much it. And you're, you're sure. I would say you're in, in this workshop, you're the guy with the deep technical knowledge. I have that. I have, I, I, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Fair to say. <laughs> Tony too. Tony does too. He's got deep technical Well, knowledge. you both do. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Tony, how about yourself? I know you come with a different set of uh, tools here to the, the show. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, I th one reason why uh, I'm here also is I, I've been a uh, pretty extensive uh, church musician for, for some time, uh, uh, not only as a musician, uh, a vocalist, but as a keyboardist, uh, a music director, uh, arranger. Uh, but uh, I also uh, have a, a music education uh, back background. I, I went to music school uh, at Indiana University, uh, studied composition uh, there. And, uh, but I've been, I've been a live musician since I was old enough to go play <laughs> anywhere where you, you were old enough to get paid for it. Uh, but I started doing a lot of church music actually when I was in uh, high school because my first instrument was violin. Uh, so I actually learned uh, a lot about uh, acoustic instruments through actually playing in the community college orchestras, things like that uh, before I went to college. And uh, just like Blake, uh, I got involved with the Yamaha uh, I started doing uh, demos for some of their synthesizers right when I got out of uh, college and I finished my undergraduate degree and uh, got involved with Yamaha uh, in a similar way. Knew somebody at Yamaha like like Blake knew somebody and uh, they kind of latched on to our uh, affinity for technology <laughs> and our love for keyboards and that's kind of what's kept us here ever since. All right, so you guys are now on video. For some reason, you weren't showing up there, but I think I, I solved that issue. So thank you to whoever chatted that for us. Um, so we've got three keyboard players here today, and I come also with a, a, a big background in the house of worship industry having, well, let's put it this way. I went to a seminary for four years, and every single day we had mass and we did performing music every single day. So... Uh, I know the ins and outs. I grew up through the church. I've had, I have a lot of experience in now performing out. So I was, I think it's safe to say, I won't give away the exact number because that'll tell our ages, but I think it's safe to say we have <laughs> easily well north of 70 years of experience sure. on, on, on the subject here. So <laughs> maybe more. Yeah, maybe, 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 okay. maybe, maybe quite. I don't know. More. Depending on the playing situation, it tends to age you. So, you know, <laughs> right. All right, well, guys. I, you know, ever since I became 30 last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like me, born in the 80s, right? <laughs> sure. All right. So 
we've there's now the hosts of worship have so many different platforms to perform music on, right? Especially keyboards that they have different ser- types of services, different areas within the building, uh, different groups, different, you know, they may have a folk group. They may have just the individual organist or piano player. Um, and each one of those situations may need different features, right? Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, Blake, today you're going to talk about the feature set and, uh, Tony, your, your focus is going to be on the different players involved in there as well. Right, right. So we have a short poll. This is going to help us quite a bit, folks. Uh, if you could answer the questions on this poll, this will help us in focusing in on what you need. Uh, so we have some questions here for you to quickly answer, if you could. Uh, let us know what, what your role is in the church. Uh, what uh, what do you use? How are you using the technology within the church? And then, what keyboard instruments do you currently have? And uh, while they're filling that out, Blake, why don't you talk about feature sets? The importance of those within the houses of worship, as sure, far well, as keyboards. You know, in the the products that we're talking about today, um, they uh, are specifically focused on different types of players in need. So. Um, and the three, the three different, um, different types of products that we have are piano focused products, um, more versatile style products and deeper, um, products that do just a lot more. So let's talk about piano focused products. That would be our CP line. Um, the idea behind the CP line is having dedicated pianos, dedicated electric pianos, the focus deeply on pianos, a full suite of pianos. Um, the most pianos that you have in the products right there and, and a very easy to use straightforward interface to enhance that. Cause a lot of players are just pianists and that's actually where I came from as well. I mean, if I'm playing a gig, I wasn't really playing much organ before we started getting into that, um, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I was playing piano. So I was perfectly fine with something like a stage piano, which is what our CP series is all about. And then we have these more versatile types of products that maybe aren't super deep, but they offer a little bit more in sound and in choices of sound. And that's where the YC series really fits that bill. So that's a more versatile instrument because it has an organ section. It has key section. It has three types of technologies. It has um, FM for synthesizers type sounds, organs, and that classic DX um, piano, electric piano sound. Um, it has AWM for our uh, virtual um, drawbar organ modeling, which is very cool, and our rotary speaker modeling. And then it also has the AWM type of sample-based synthesis for um, piano. So the idea behind this product is to have something that has a little bit more versatility for sound um, that takes it in a different direction than a focused product like the very piano focused um, CP series. And then finally, deep products. That would be synthesizers. That's what Montage and Modi X are about. The, uh, the ability to create lots of different sounds, the ability to edit down to the molecular level of the sound to get to the elements, the operators, the things that make the sound and really, really tweak that stuff. And if you need something that does a lot of, um, of versatility in sound, basically, that depth of sound, that's what Montage and Modi X are about. So piano focused, more versatile type of stage keyboard, and then the deep um, production and performance type of synthesizer. Those are the three basic feature sets that we've kind of identified. And that, you know, that's the same goes for houses of worship. It, it goes from very, very small churches to a single musician to huge, huge productions. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Go, and, and it's important to have the correct keyboard for the, you know, across the board. So you can right. in all those multiple situations. Yep. All right. So we're going to round up the polling here real quick here. And let's take a look at this. Um, so we've got worship leader purchasing, uh, musicians, liturgical director, lots of live performances, obviously. Uh, we do have some live broadcast and recording. We've got acoustic pianos, digital pianos, several people and synthesizers. That's, that's interesting to me. We see that, um, the, in, I guess, in most of my experience, they haven't had synthesizers 
on on site or in the house of worship and but that's because of the style of music they've been doing so sure so we have uh some videos that demo these uh keyboards which which one should we hit first Blake and Tony you think the the CP yeah I think I think the order um you know CP and and YC I think are probably the ones that most churches are going to gravitate towards um so I think uh CP YC um montage would be that's that's a good order okay all right so let me run this here and we'll see you on the end of this video Hey there. So this is the CP series. The CP series are stage pianos. They are piano focused instruments with a streamlined one to one user interface. The CP series features a dedicated piano section right here, an electric piano section, a subsection for things like backing pads, strings and other sounds, a dedicated delay and reverb section, and a master EQ. CP series come in two models. The 88 note CP88 is what you see here. This is for discerning pianists wanting a grand piano experience. And then there's the 73 key CP73. These are for gigging pianists who want a lighter weight instrument that's easy to move around. CP series features this cool, fast and easy to use one-to-one -one user interface design. Important functions that you need on stage are literally a switch, a button or a knob away. Very cool. CP88 and CP73 are identical in every way except for the different sizes and key actions. The CP88 that you see right here features an 88 key natural wood graded hammer action. This means that the keys in the lower register feel slightly heavier and as you move up the keyboard they get lighter. This simulates the different hammer sizes on a grand piano action. The key tops are also very cool. They are synthetic ebony and ivory, and to round out this great piano experience, CP88 features a triple sensor. This means that you can restrike the key before it comes up off of the bottom of the keystrokes. Again, this simulates the action of a grand piano. It's very, very fast, very, very easy to play. Because of the action, the CP88 is a great choice for a discerning pianist. Now the CP73, this features what we call a balanced hammer action, 73 keys. The action isn't graded like the CP88, but the balanced hammer action has a nice weighted feel and feels like a high quality vintage electric piano. The action also has the benefit of being really lightweight and the CP73 weighs in at just 28.9 pounds. That's over 10 pounds lighter than the CP88, which weighs in at 41 pounds. The smaller size and the lighter weight of the CP73 make it a great choice for a keyboardist on the go. So here are the two models right here, the CP88 up here at the top and the CP73 below that. As you can tell, the front panel, the operation, the sounds, all are identical. The difference again between these two models are the weight, the key size, and the key action itself. Other than that, they're identical. Churches needing a familiar stage piano interface focused on acoustic and electric pianos, a fast and easy to use user interface and simple connectivity to a computer or iOS device will love the CP series. Integrated USB audio and MIDI connectivity make the CP series easy to connect to a computer or iOS device. If you use virtual instruments, Apple main stage, need simple connectivity to a Mac or PC to record your music to a DAW, or you just wanna play sounds from an iOS device, you'll appreciate this straightforward feature.
If you need to control other hardware instruments or tone generators, CP series have extensive master MIDI controller setups. You can split and layer internal sounds with external sounds or combinations at the touch of a button. It's very cool. Now, what I'd like to do is play through eight different piano sounds to give you an idea of the range of pianos in this instrument. You have a piano for virtually any type of music you can think of. So check it out. Here's the CFX nine foot concert grand to start with. switch to another sound. This is the Bosendorfer Imperial 290 Concert Grand, but notice I didn't cut off the previous sound. Seamless sound switching is one of the cool things about this instrument. You can move from live set sound to live set sound without cutting off the previous sound. So here's the Bosendorfer Imperial now. Now I'll move to the Hamburg Grand. This is a beautiful German concert grand. Now here's the CF3. This is a uh, Yamaha concert grand from the CP300 series. Beautiful sound. Now here's the live CF3. This is a brighter version of that previous piano. Here's a C7. This is a seven foot six inch grand piano. Here's the S700. This was a piano that we actually had in the S90ES, a very popular instrument. We brought it back for the CP series. And then last, we have this cool character piano. This is the Nashville C3. This is, a, this is a Yamaha C3 piano that's used in a lot of recording studios, and it has this nice, uh, very character-rich sound. Check it out. So lots of different pianos in this instrument. Very cool. Now, the last part I want to show you is this section right here. This is the live set. So what a live set is, as you can see, as I touch different live sets, you see the entire front panel change. This is where I save my custom settings. So if I have certain combinations of sections, effects, and so on, I can save them for instant recall in the live set. And once again, as you move from live set to live set like this, you'll notice that it seamlessly switches between those sounds. Seamless sound switching is a great thing about this instrument. It allows you to move from one part of the performance to another seamlessly. The other thing that's cool about the live set is right here, you have things like split point, transpose, touch response, tuning, all right here at the touch of a button. And what I'd like to show you is a basic thing like, how about splitting the keyboard? So I have my CFX sound right here. Right, And what I want to do is split and put a bass in the lower register. So I have that already set up right here. The bass is in the others category. It's not split right now. But what I want to do is move the button right here to the left. So that's where my bass will be in the left now. And then I touch right here and I have right. So it's only right, not both illuminated. So now I have a nice split right here. If I like this, I want to store it. I just go like this, hit store. It is now stored right in that live set location very fast. Again, the one-to-one -one user interface make this a great stage piano. So that's it for the CP series. If you have any other additional questions at all, go to YamahaSynth.com. We have lots of articles and videos specifically about this instrument. You can check out lots of different sounds up there as well. And finally, if you have any additional question, you can always talk to the professionals at Full Compass. Thanks for watching this video. All right, that is that was absolutely amazing. Whoops, that's not the one we want. We want this. There we go. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm wearing the same. I haven't changed clothes in days. <laughs> no, I, I have a few of these. Uh, so let let me uh, go back to uh, so that everybody can see uh, everybody here. Um, back going back to old school of houses of worship, you had a pipe organ, right? You had a pipe organ and a piano. Sure. You had both of you were lucky. Um, you had one sound on the piano and you had different sounds on the pipe organ, but that would just change the pipes that you're all the air is blowing through. And you'd have registrations that you could press that would quickly change to those. And if you had any variations in temperature at all within that church or humidity, tuning was an issue, not only with the piano, but with the pipe organ as well. All that goes away. All that goes away. So great, it's great to have multiple piano sounds to choose from depending yeah. on whether you're going live broadcast or cause each one sounds different. Right? Yeah. And you know, it's interesting cause I know that you play um, solo piano. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, I played a gig last night and the place that I played in was actually very church. Like um, it, it's a big coffee shop with the high ceiling. So it's very, very um, reverberant in there. Um, and I used a CP on the gig last night and I can't underscore how important it is to have a selection of different pianos for different uses in rooms, in recording. I use all of those pianos. Um, I think last night I used the CFX primarily because it has that strong fundamental. It doesn't have a lot of, of note bloom is what I call it, or resonance. So it really functions perfectly in that environment. And I remember I was talking to one worship director who came to me when the CP came out and said, um, you know what I really want? I really want that CF3. And when we first released the CP series, um, I, I didn't mention this in the video, um, but the um, both YC and CP and really Montage, we have firmware updates that are, these OS updates really change what's happening with the keyboard. They add new sounds, new features, and we try to add new sounds, especially based on what customers want. So this worship um, leader came up to me and said, I have a, a CP300. Boy, that's a heavy keyboard. And when I saw the CP88, I was really excited. But when I played it, the CF3 from my um, P300 isn't in there. And I, I definitely heard that. And YCJ, Yamaha Corporation Japan, heard that as well because we told them. And guess what? One of the firmware updates added the CF3 and the live CF3. So not just piano one, but piano one and two. And the reason why I know why he likes that piano, it has a brighter, more direct sound, especially the live CF3. You can really hear it in that video, how much brighter that piano is. But if you're in a big church, that's gonna be really important. And maybe, maybe the Bosendorfer Imperial, although a great piano is a better choice for something like a recording, um, situation or or something like that but having the selection of all those pianos man that that to me is is a great thing so that's that's the one thing i wanted to kind of point out that it's striking listening to it on the video how different those pianos are each one is is entirely different from the other one absolutely you know? and you know it's important and tony i'm, I'm going to lead this into you here um uh, this when so houses of worship you may have you're just playing piano so you want that full piano sound that's all that's playing at that point but if you're playing in a group you can't have that full sound right you want to fit into right. the mix of the, everybody else you you don't want to be walking on the bass player or the guitar player over there so you need to change that piano sound and get maybe more of a mid-rangey type thing or or yeah and you know and, and that can change I, i'll go in church sometimes where it's just me and a and a cantor or a singer, and then the, the other times where it's like, oh, at this one, there's somebody playing drums and somebody playing bass, or somebody playing <laughs> drums and somebody playing guitar. And so sometimes the needs of what you need the piano to do uh, in the moment, like it's, it's like, you know, you get there, oh, it's 30 minutes before we start, what are we doing? <laughs> 
And so there's a, a bunch of things that, that really play into that. One is the variation in the number of piano sounds is a huge thing because also depending on what piano kind of piano part you have to play, if you've got a bass player there and you want to stay away from some of the left hand stuff, I mean, not all that different from a lot of stuff that I know that, that Blake can speak of uh, as far as you know playing in a jazz combo where you don't want to be walking all over the bass player, but also how you're going to play may, may decide uh, what kind of piano sound you're going to use. And one of the other things that Blake talked about was that whole one-to-one -one, uh, control correspondence with uh, features. And one really huge feature is the EQ that there is on the keyboard because instantly being able to go, well, I really do want that CFX because, you know, when you're playing, you always have the battle between what makes you feel good when you're playing compared to what everyone else is going to hear, right? <laughs> so it's like, I really want to feel like I'm playing an acoustic piano and I love this sound, but I realize that I can't have it sound big and boomy like I, my head's inside a nine foot concert grand for everybody else because I have to play with all these other people. So having that EQ is a really valuable thing. Having other piano sounds that are maybe, you know, uh, like Blake had talked about, the CFX has a really strong fundamental. Having other uh, piano sounds that don't necessarily have that because you're comping behind four vocalists can make a huge difference. Absolutely. So, Tony, talk about more about the, the different player types, different situations that in all your experience that you've seen. through. Well, uh, you know, I think that you'll find player types where, you know, you're the lone, you're the lone, lone ranger where you have to go in and like you have to do everything. So in some cases, depending on what music is thrown at you for that week, sometimes I'll get thrown pieces of music where it's like, this is clearly not a piano piece <laughs> and I need to do something besides piano. There needs to be something underneath it, like a pad, or I really need to play this on a guitar sound. Uh, uh, Blake has some other examples uh, in one of the other videos where just taking guitar sound and layering it with something underneath uh, a pad, an FM organ, makes a huge difference and carries the rest of the song. And having those things available to instantaneously being able to bring them in and out um, the, so the solo performer, I think, always has uh, the biggest weight on their shoulders if you're looking at what different type of music you're playing. And at one point, it's, it's a whole choir and you're just the only one playing. But piano isn't quite enough. You need something underneath it or you need something in addition for uh, accent, uh, transitional melodies that go in between verse and chorus, things like that. Um, so there's that. But then the other type of player is somebody that is going to play more than one keyboard. Uh, and I think that's when, uh, you know, when you need a bass player, but they don't give you one. So having that second sound being available that you can, you know, use so you can be the bass player, but you can still be the piano player. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that when Blake talked about the CP, you know, a very large portion of church players uh, come from uh, the direction of playing piano in the beginning. Uh, there are some out there that, you know, their role in the church as they, they came forward on a more contemporary uh, uh, setting would be maybe organ, although playing piano. And I think that uh, that's why uh, we have uh, different types of keyboard models for the different particular, I mean, key models for the, the keyboard model. So YC has three different ones. Uh, there's even two different actions that are in the CP that have to do with making it more portable, but also... Uh, the CP88, uh, you know, it's a wooden key action. So for people that are really, really attached to the piano, uh, that's going to make a big difference as opposed to somebody that periodically, you know, they're going to play a string pad, they're going to play a guitar sound or something where playing it on the wooden keys is a little, little overkill for, you know, being able to articulate certain things. But I, I think, you know, there's constantly, when I go to different churches, I see different types of players, uh, people that, started from the piano and they really just want the keyboard to be an extension of the piano and then there's other people that are like they need that keyboard to be uh, a swiss army knife you know and i think that's where uh the yc is more of a swiss army knife uh than the cp uh, but at the same time doesn't go all the way overboard as in a synthesizer um and you know this makes me think of something else that i think is uh kind of valuable to bring up and when you said uh before looking at the polling a lot of people using synthesizers in the church. And I think that the reason why is because uh, that's pretty much what there has been until recently. Uh, Yamaha's really been trying to focus on the concept of different types of players <laughs> and what their affinity is for uh, where their playing background is and what they want to be able to do when they're performing. And, you know, it used to be, it's like, well, if you want to get the best keyboard, you go and you get the most expensive synthesizer with the weighted keys, and that's what you put in your church. And then, you know, 80% of the time you play the piano sounds in it. 
and and you have all this other stuff. You know, it's kind of like, hey, I got a spice rack and a whole pantry full of all sorts of ingredients, and I make hamburgers for a living, right? So you know, it's a it, it's a different thing, and that's why I think it's great about what we have to offer in the keyboard line because uh, there's lots of people out there that really what they're looking for is that variation in piano sounds like Blake is talking about. And they're not worried about sweeping a filter necessarily all the time. They're not necessarily worried about an arpeggiator, uh, those type of things. They're worried about taking a, a general sound and doing fantastic things to it, almost like in a recording setting, but in the keyboard. And that's what I think Blake uh, showed really well in the, uh, the demo there. Absolutely. Um, so Hustle Worship will have different different services, right? They'll have weddings, funerals, and the regular weekly mass. And weddings a lot, they'll bring in other musicians. So it's important to have an instrument that's easy to figure out, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially when you have to play a wedding and you don't know how long it's going to take them to come down the aisle or they give you another piece of music at the last minute. Oh, my cousin is doing this and she sings this better than anybody. Can you play this? <laughs> and then uh, you instantly have to switch gears and maybe change sounds on the keyboard that you're playing. And the CPYC make that phenomenally easy. Uh, not only can you just flip a switch to turn or add sounds on or off, but you also have the ability to uh, you know, use controllers with it in that you can use a foot switch to bring those sounds in and out. Because you know, being piano centric, one of the things you never really wanna do as a pianist is to take these off of the keys and switch a sound while you're playing the music, especially if you have to turn a page <laughs> at the same time. Uh, so uh, that is, is another really invaluable feature. And I, I tell this to people at any of the keyboard clinics I do, uh, you know, if your keyboard will, will accommodate two foot switches, two foot controllers, use them all because it's going to completely enhance uh, the level of expression you're going to be able to put forth with the sound. And it's going to make playing sounds and transitioning to sounds uh, much easier. Um, you touched upon, upon something as well, not just a piano sound, but layering sounds. Uh, in doing that, I have to say that can have a very huge impact on how the moment of the service comes across. Yeah. You, you can take it from just being a, you know, a beautiful song to layering pads and, and there to making it to literally bring some people to tears and in, in, in emotion uh, in a service like that. So I think that's a huge, huge uh, thing that people need to take advantage of. Well, that's, that's why work. that the whole concept of seamless sound switching. Yeah. That's, that's like, you know, <laughs> That's the one thing I love about all the products that you're going to see. They all do that exact thing where you can move from one sound to another sound and have that dramatic moment as you move. And, and as a single person, single player, you, yeah. can, you can have great big sound. You, you know, churches may not be able to afford to have an entire choir and orchestra and other instruments and so forth in there or performing. It's, maybe it's just you so that you can get that bigger sound. That's, yeah, that's with the perception of the gravity of adding a second sound in there, not just starting and having both sounds playing at the same time, but being able to instantly bring that second sound in, maybe for just part of the piece of music. Like we've all played something that you're say we're playing in the key of in the key of G, and all of a sudden we you know you go up and down, you're back on the tonic in the key of G, and then the bridge or the chorus or something walks down to minor six and you go ba bum bum, just that passage and kicking in like a string sound when you're moving down adds this level of drama that I, I, I brings it right a up. guitar player one time and he was just like, how are you doing that? And I said, I'm just turning on the other keyboard, <laughs> you know, but all I did was I had both keyboards hooked together at the time. And this was before there was a, a lot of multi timbral capability and, and things and being able to kick in the other keyboard by pushing down a pedal and bringing it in adds an incredible amount of weight and texture to your sound instantaneously. And that's why, uh, you know, like what was amazing about what Blake was showing when he's playing one piano to the next, which I don't know if any of the people that have been watching uh, uh, noticed this, but he never let up on the sustain pedal. As he went from one piano to the other, he kept his foot down on the damper pedal and went to a different piano. And you never, ever Seamless. heard 
anything change. And that was just so fantastic. It was almost like he had his own, he almost had like his own DJ mixer guy back there going, okay, we're, we're mixing, we're blending to this one. And it's, it's such an invaluable feature when you want to transition in between songs at the same time. And so he could have a live set with piano and strings and then another one with piano and electric piano and he would switch to that live set and it's just going to go right from one to the next. I was so happy when that feature <laughs> came yeah, about. It used to be there was a loud thump. You know, you'd yep. be holding the sustain, and yeah. as soon as you change that sound, it was right onto that other sound. It was just totally abrupt. Now you can you can hold a string chord, and that's ringing out, and then you can yeah. holding it, and then you can come in with the piano right underneath it, and then the strings fade away. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. this was a big change between the motif series and montage. You know, and, and because, again, our um, our developers in Japan heard us, and that was a big, big feature change. I mean, you could do it on a motif, but you have to do it in the mix mode and in a different mode. It's not just in the main, you know, voice or performance mode. So both Montage and Modi X have that capability as well, but also, obviously, the stage pianos and stage. All right. So we, we've been talking about CP, and we saw the CP demo. Uh, YC is another one in Montage. So we have a, a, a the YC uh, quick demo Blake that you did so let's uh let me cue that up here and we'll take a look at that we'll again type in your questions folks as you have them use the question and answer feature and here we go <laughs> there. So this is the YC series. YC series are stage keyboards. They are versatile organ focus instruments that feature the streamlined one-to-one -one user interface similar to the CP series. YC series feature an innovative drawbar organ design with these cool backlit LEDs right here. Here's the upper manual and there's the lower manual. You actually have seven different colors that you can choose from to customize it as you like. You also have control over the rotary speaker right here, vibrato chorus and percussion right here. Just exactly the same thing that you would expect to find on a classic drawbar organ. It's an innovative take on a very classic design. Over here, you have a couple of key sections right here that you can turn on and off. You have piano, electric piano, synth sounds, strings, brass, and so on right here in this section. You have effects, a speaker amp section, reverb, and a master EQ. YC series actually come in three models. There is the 88 note YC88 for the piano focused musician that needs a versatile array of sounds. The 73 note YC73, lighter weight, for the musician on the go. And then of course, this is the organ focused YC61. This is the lightweight 61 key version featuring the waterfall style key bed preferred by organists. YC series feature that same fast and easy to navigate one-to-one -one user interface design. Again, similar to the CP series. Important functions needed during performance are literally a button knob or switch away. The difference between the YC series and the CP series are the CP series is more piano focused. This is a more versatile instrument. The YC series are great choices for players needing a stage instrument with a versatile selection of drawbar organs, pianos, electric pianos, synth leads, pads, and so on. YC series versatility is due to its three tone generation technologies. On board you have VCM, virtual circuitry modeling. We use this technology for the vintage drawbar organ sounds and the rotary speaker simulation. 
on board, there's also FM Synthesis. Now, we've had FM Synthesis for 40 years at Yamaha back with the DX7. It's evolved to the point now we see it in the Montage and the Modi X Music Synthesizers. Well, we use this cool synthesis technology in the YC for the electronic combo organs, vintage combo organs of the 60s. There's also a great pure sine wave organ that's using the 8 operator FM Synthesizer engine. We also have the great DX style FM piano the electric piano that was so popular in the 80s. But there's also some great synth leads, pads, and so on, all using pure FM synthesis. Lastly, we have AWM. That's our sample-based technology. So all the pianos, electric pianos, um, brass, strings, guitars, and other sounds are generated by AWM. Now, YC Series comes in three different sizes and key actions. You have the piano-focused YC88. That uses the same action as the CP88, so it's a graded hammer natural wood action. Graded hammer meaning that the keys in the low end are slightly heavier, and as you gradually move up the keyboard, they get lighter, and that simulates the different hammer sizes on an acoustic grand piano. You also have the synthetic ebony and ivory key tops and the triple sensor that allows you to restrike the note before it comes off the bottom of the keystroke. This simulates that grand piano action. So the YC88 is for someone that is a piano-focused musician but wants a little bit more versatility than just a stage piano. Then you have the keyboard-focused YC73. This has that same 73-key balanced hammer action that's on the CP88. Um, it has a nice weighted vintage electronic piano feel to it. I really like that feel. The action has the benefit of being lightweight. So the YC88 weighs in what, just under 29.6 pounds, and it's about 10 pounds lighter than the YC88, which comes in at 41 pounds. This is the same action, again, as the CP73. Finally, you have this instrument right here. This is the YC61. The YC61 has a waterfall-style action. The name waterfall references that smooth corner of the key, which is different than a piano key with an overhanging um, key top. So, this type of action isn't weighted like a piano and facilitates draw bar organ playing techniques like palm smears and glissandos. The YC61 is the lightest model at just under 15 pounds. And again, this is probably the most organ focused one with that waterfall style action. So here they are, the three models, the YC88 up there at the top. In the middle, you have the YC73 and the organ focused YC61. I should say that Internally, these are all identical. The only difference is going to be the sizes and the key action, and there is one slight difference between the 73 and the 88. They both have XLR outputs in addition to quarter-inch outputs, whereas the compact YC61, it only has quarter-inch outputs because of its size. The YC series are perfect instruments for churches that love that familiar organ style interface, but also need a wider range of sounds. It also has that fast and easy to use one-to-one -one user interface, and of course, easy to use USB MIDI and audio computer connectivity. That connectivity is very cool. You can easily connect to a computer. If you use virtual instruments, Apple MainStage, need simple connectivity to a Mac or PC to record your music to a DAW, or just want to play songs from an iOS device like an iPhone or an iPad, you'll really appreciate that straightforward feature. If you need to control other hardware instruments or tone generators, well, each YC series live set has master MIDI keyboard controller setups. You can split and layer internal sounds, external sounds, combinations of them, and you can recall them all with the touch of a button. It's very, very easy. To underscore the versatility of this instrument, I'm just going to play through five entirely different live set sounds. So check it out.
So that last sound that I played there, that was entirely FM. FM EP, an FM pad, and the F1 organ. Versatile. The last thing I want to show you is, is this cool looper delay. It highlights the versatility of this instrument, and it's just really fun to create these interesting um, looping textures using this delay. I That's the YC Series Stage Keyboards. If you want to know more about this amazing instrument, go to YamahaSynth.com. We have lots of articles, videos. We have some cool sound demos up there. Go up there and check it out. That's YamahaSynth.com. If you have any additional questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to contact your professional staff at Full Compass. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good one. Wow, talk about <clears throat> versatile. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I uh, love, you know, I, I, I thought about the, the, the looper part of it, but, you know, I, I've seen lots of churches that, that have a lot of, um, you know, youth services and youth groups and stuff where they do want to do a lot more kind of, you know, different stuff, uh, all sorts of different music. And I thought that, you know, I, I, I think that the looper things that you can do with it and the versatility of the sound you know, for more modern types of music um, are, is, is such a cool feature. And it's it is pretty, pretty cool. A lot, of, a lot of people are using that, that feature. Now, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, do, I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Can you, you, you sat there and you created the loop. We saw how that, that, that all works. Can you easily store that loop and recall it, the fully recorded version of it? Or well, no, what I, would, what I would do with that is I would record it. Um, cause, cause you know, the loop is one of those things that's, it's a, you can recall, you can set the settings up. So it's ready to go. Like I did, I recalled the, the, um, the live set and the looper delay is right there for me to start something, but so, it's always kind of like a, uh, like a, a piece by piece you build it. Yeah. Right. I build it in real time. So how I would save that, I would use the USB MIDI and audio connectivity and either connect, you know, my phone or the, or the, uh, the computer up to it because we are ios compatible which is cool too so and i just record directly to the uh to the phone or the if, if i because i have actually found one like oh this is really cool and immediately want to turn on the the uh the daw and record it right into cubase or logic or pro tools or whatever so yeah so so a couple things on on the yc super portable that <laughs> I yeah. have the YC61 in front of me, and yeah. every time I pick it up, and it's the fact that it's 15 pounds is yeah, just, it's crazy. Wow. So it's coming, crazy. Yeah. So and and on there you've got draw bars. You've got 16 foot, yeah. eight foot, yeah. two foot. You have all the organ features. So if you have a different part of the church, church basement, and you're having a little get together, you can easily move that down there, and you have a full pipe organ sound, right? Or, well, you or, have you it, have everything. There, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's more, more of the, more of the, the, uh, the classic vintage, you know, uh, draw bar organ stuff. Um, but, um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely sounds in there that the FM organ has a really great ability to simulate a pipe organ because of its, of its FM ness. Um, so that, that's the one that I would probably choose. To Speaking do of which, more. The, the, the sound of the DX just takes me right back. <laughs> yeah. I, I just love, love that sound. It takes me to a place in time. 
probably because I was born in the eighties, like we mentioned earlier. That's right. right. That's exactly. <laughs> well, it's a you know, it's a great size to sit on top of a grand piano. That's the other thing that's really nice mm-hmm. about yes. that. Yes. I mean, I mean, obviously, any of these you could sit on top of a grand piano you want. The nice part is, is that if you have an acoustic piano and that is kind of like the centerpiece of musical activity in your church and you need other things, it's a really, really useful tool to add to that because you have other pianos you could use with it if you decide you want to, but at instantly being able to go to an electric piano sound and ha- using that as the top part of what you're playing or going to that really great brass uh, sound reference like, uh, like Blake was showing or the one that I love is just I love uh, putting the guitar in there. And to me, things like that guitar sound and putting something behind it are really useful in just my like everyday use of things because there's a lot of places where I would really like to have a finger-picked type guitar or arpeggiated type uh, passage because it just doesn't sound the same on the piano or it's also really nice to be able to double it and to instantly be able to go to that to change the sound to put a pad underneath it but have it right there my piano's right here and the other keyboard's right here it doesn't require another keyboard stand it's great because it's such a small format it's not heavy um, it's fantastic. Now, there's one thing I'd like to point out real quick about the YC that's, that's a cool feature as well. There's an external keyboard feature in YC. Yeah. And what this allows you to do is um, a couple of things. One of them, let's say you have, um, you want to set up a dual manual time type of experience where you actually have a lower keyboard playing the organ part and uh, the lower manual and then the upper manual. There's a really simple, simple um, feature in here that's called external keyboard that you literally select what you want to control like external or internal and then you can point just the um, lower manual to be controlled by a lower keyboard and have the upper manual coming from the YC itself another cool feature about this let's say you have a 88 note weighted keyboard that you've had for some time and the sound, you know, you went to the store and you've heard other things that sound better. And, you know, I just don't have the money to do that. I, and, I, you know, honestly, I really love the action of my older weighted keyboard. What you can do with this, too, is that you can point it at the key section in a YC and just play the key section. So if you like the big CFX or that C7 piano I played on the video and you want to play it from the bottom weighted keyboard, you can do that and still have access to the organ and the other key section on the top keyboard. So they really figured out how to, how to, how to make this work with what you already have. That is such a huge feature to me about the YC series. Yeah, incredibly keyboard. useful. I mean, like, just, just throw it out there. You're a church that has a motif. <laughs> All right, there's a few of them, right? Plenty yeah. of them. And, and like Blake said, man, I just love the way my motif ES feels or whatever your weighted keyboard is. And I'd really like to, I want to keep that. I like that, those sounds, but I want, the, I want the Yamaha sounds, all those new piano sounds, to be able to just take like a YC and hook it up. And that the way they set it up, you don't have to worry about this zoning thing or whatever. You just pick what is your top keyboard, what's your bottom keyboard. And like he said, you could have what your lower keyboard is. That's the one you already own. And they can be playing all of those keyboard sounds that are in the YC and just leave all the organ stuff on top. I mean, it's, there's, I don't know of any other keyboard that actually does that. Uh, And especially since people are always asking me, I want to upgrade my sounds. And a lot of people don't understand if you have a keyboard that's 10 or 15 years old and they just, well, can't I just get the new sounds and stick them in my old keyboard? No, (laughs) you want a new keyboard sounds, you need a new keyboard. But this keyboard, the YC is very, very specifically designed in this regard, like Blake's talking about for people that want to upgrade their setup, but don't necessarily want to get rid of anything in their setup. Absolutely. So guys, we we have another video here. Are we, uh, we got enough time to run that one? I think so. I mean, you know, as long as people want to stay, the the motif one is, or the montage one is, you know, so yeah. That's what we got up next. So let's run that one.
Hey there. So this is the Montage Music Synthesizer right here. You can create and edit sounds at the deepest level with this instrument. Um, this makes it different than something like the CP series stage piano and the YC series stage keyboards. Because of this level of editing, this is what sets this apart. So if you need something that you can create lots of different sounds, that's what the montage is all about. So it comes in three sizes. The Montage 8 is the 88-note weighted version. The Montage 6 and 7 are both 61 uh, and 76-note synthesizer-style action. It also comes in two different colors. This is the Spotlight White color here. It also comes in those three same sizes, 88, um, 76, and 61. There's also the Modi X. Now, that's the lighter weight midline sibling to the Montage. It's built on the same technology, but Montage just has more features, more real-time control, and more DSP power. So it also comes in three sizes as well. There's the 88 Modi X8, the 76 Modi X7, and the 61 note Modi X6. So let's take a look just real fast so you can see these. Here's the original um, coloring of the montage in that graphite gray 876 right there. We also have the white version 876 right here as well. And then here's the Modi X, Modi X8, Modi X7, and Modi X6. So there you go. Those are the main things. Now let's take a look at some of the other features of the montage. So Montage and Modi X are great choices for synthesis, keyboardists, or pianists that really need the widest range of sound creation. Now, this is in contrast, again, to the CP and the YC series. Montage and Modi X allow very deep sound editing and the ability to control lots of parameters in real time. You know, this super knob right here is just one example of that control. Check this out. I have a sound in here that I've selected that's called Turn It On. So you'll hear when I play... Now check it out, when I move the super knob, you hear all these. So you hear all of these parameters and different sounds changing at the same time. It's controlling all those knobs simultaneously. So that's just one example of this deep level of control and editing that you get with an instrument like this. So for churches needing access to lots of different sounds and the ability to deeply edit and control those sounds, Montage and Modi X are great choices, absolutely. Montage and Modi X feature built-in USB audio and MIDI interfaces. This means that you can connect to a computer with a single USB cable, both MIDI and audio, when you want to record to the computer. This is pretty cool. Not only are they both MIDI and audio, it's multi-channel audio. That means that you can create a song in this instrument right here that has drums, bass, keys, guitars, strings, and record each of those parts on separate audio tracks into a DAW. That's a very powerful feature. You do that all without the need for an external audio interface. So if your church produces live streams or television shows, um, has recording and music production facilities on site, or just needs an instrument that offers sound design and song creation features like this, Montage and Modi X are both great choices.
So in montage, there's only one mode. It's called performance mode. And that's what you see right here when I touch this button here, performance mode. You have different views on performance mode, but that's the only mode that's in here. Performances are comprised of parts. And this happens to be a four part performance that with that keyboard control on, I'm playing all of those parts simultaneously. So pretty cool. You can have lots of stuff in these performances arpeggios that play grooves and all sorts of things. Now, that's the performance mode. Next to that is the live set. The live set is basically a collection of up to 16 performances. There are preset live sets, and then there's live sets like you see right here. This is a user live set. You can select these performances directly from this live set. So that's just what I was doing when I was playing some of those sounds earlier. I can move between sounds very easily by touching on the touchscreen. can move to another sound without cutting off the previous sound. That's because this has seamless sound switching. So does the CP and the YC series um, stage keyboards. Seamless sound switching, very cool. Finally, we have a thing called category search. Category search allows me to find sounds. I can search in different banks, preset banks and user banks right here, or I can search by an attribute. Let's say I just want to see stuff that's only uses the sample based AWM2 engine, or let's say I just want to see more of the a pure synthesis of FMX, another one of the engines in this instrument. So you can search like this. And then last, you have this cool text-based search. So if you know that there is this sound that you just love that has the city of Seattle in it, which is the Seattle sections, because we recorded the Seattle symphony for some of these, there's everything that has the word Seattle right there. So if I want to find that Seattle section sound that you heard that moves from a large ensemble to a small ensemble with the turn of that super knob, you have it right there. So that's just a real basic overview of the operation of this very deep, very great sounding montage music synthesizer. So as I mentioned before, both Montage and Modiex have integrated USB MIDI and multi-channel audio connectivity. This makes both of those products ideal choices for churches that need not only the deeper sound design, but also really cool music production features and connectivity. I should mention this too, it is a control surface. Both Montage and Modi X have DAW control surface capabilities. This means that you can connect using that same USB audio and MIDI connectivity to a DAW and control its features remotely using the hardware controls of the instrument. If I go over here to settings, you can see that I have live Pro Tools, Logic Pro and Cubase. It supports that right out of the box when you connect to either a Mac or a PC via USB. It's a very cool feature on both Montage and Modi X. Because of the USB audio and MIDI connectivity, if you use main stage, you can play virtual instruments and monitor them. They will output via the outputs of the Montage or Modi X out of stereo outputs. So because of that USB MIDI and audio connectivity, it's one keyboard that also plays all your virtual instruments that are in a connected computer as well. There's also SoundMondo. So SoundMondo is our social sound sharing site that we have nearly 100,000 sounds up there for all of our products. That means Montage, Modiex, YC, CP, the Reface series. Very cool. You can save your own si sounds up to SoundMondo. You can download the sounds that are put up by all of our end users all over the world. It's a very cool way to get new sounds quickly and easily for free. Um, all you need is the Google Chrome browser on Mac or PC. So you have to use the Google Chrome browser. It's specific, um, has some specific technology that allows this to work. And if you have an iOS device, you can connect to an iOS device as well. I'm holding in my hand right now, speaking of iOS, this is the lightning to USB um, camera adapter is what they call this, but this is the lightning cable that goes inside of a iPhone. This connects to USB. So you have MIDI and audio connectivity to iOS devices like iPad or iPhone using Montage and Modi X. I should say that that also works on YC and CP as well. Pretty cool. So that's about it for a brief 
um, tour of the Montage Music Synthesizer. If you want to know more about these instruments, Montage, Modiex, or any of our instruments, go to YamahaSynth.com. There's lots of great articles and videos up there that you can check out to learn about these instruments. And of course, you can always contact the professionals at Full Compass if you have any additional questions whatsoever. Thank you so much, and back to the live show. Uh, well, I guess I guess I know what I'm putting on my Christmas list. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the white montage. <laughs> I love how it looks. It always looks so like a montage. Is that French? Um, I believe that the word comes from French background. It's a great name for a synthesizer because it's it's a collection of a lot of different things to montage it's a, it's a montage yeah yeah I, I i when we first heard that name back when it was released it's like really and you think about it it's like that is kind of a cool name montage it is yeah. it is pretty cool yeah so so guys we're we're near the end here so let's do a quick uh wrap up over the features tony we'll start with you any what would you like to, to say i guess regarding all all three of these sets well i think regarding all three is to kind of list link on to what uh blake had finished at the end of his video presentation is the concept of using something that you you know as part of your daily life uh you know your 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 phone here if i can get this up and it's gonna there's green on the screen there that's why but using your phone and sound mondo is a huge thing because uh let's say that you and one of your uh, fellow church musicians at another church you both have a CP, you both have a YC, you both have a uh, montage, and you would like to exchange sounds, uh, you can do that over the phone. <laughs> and it's, it's a very, very uh, unique way of sound sharing with our entire uh, keyboard owner uh, community, whether it's YC, whether it's CP or the montage, uh, you can put your own sounds uh, and share them with people all over the world. Uh, are not only just other musicians, but specifically other church musicians, if you want. There's all sorts of different ways of categorizing and tagging those things up on SoundMondo. Uh, so it's easy for people to find, and you can link them to your different uh, social media resources that you use. And if you do church music and you got your own thing, and it's like, hey, this is the sound that I use when I play this piece or that piece, or that I just did and put up on YouTube, check it out. It's a really powerful way to, uh, to share all the cool things that you do with YC, CP, or Montage with other church musicians. Blake, how about you? Yeah, you know, um, the thing that I get and the idea of having something like a top keyboard being like a YC and a bottom keyboard being a Montage, you know, those type of things, I think, um, they work really well together. I love that they've that that we've got this figured out where it makes sense sometimes to have both of these instruments. So, um, and and not just to sell, you know, you, you need to buy more of our stuff. But it is a cool thing. I think that there's a, a nice um, balance of different types of products that we have um, that accommodate that. That accommodate having a top keyboard being like a YC bottom keyboard being a CP or a montage, depending on what you use it for. Um, I think the most churches that I go to that I've seen, I think CP and YC are probably the, the best um, choices, but I definitely have been in, um, in churches where when you ask them, it's like, so do you guys have a, uh, have a, have a, have a nice sound system? And the guy just looks cold at me and says, yeah, we have two Ravage consoles. We have one for our mains and one for our monitors. Actually, sorry, we have. Uh, oh no, that's that one is is a CL console that we have. <laughs> I mean, so they're 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 using our really high end commercial stuff because this is a church that has eight thousand people, and you go into the church and you realize that it's been outfitted for you know. So a church like that multiple montages you know could easily yeah. be because they actually do those things and that, and that particular church i believe it was in colorado they actually have a uh, a weekly broadcast um on public access that's right. super high end so so yeah. you know there's a lot of different levels no question but, well and um, there's so many more options in the montage that like if you're performing live with a montage and there's more output options right so if you're constantly the bass player or you're constantly using a string section with your piano or whatever you can route those out separate analog outputs there's just a little bit more flexibility with it because it's a synthesizer uh but all of them like blake had mentioned before in the presentation you use main stage you know a lot of churches are using main stage for things 
You can use main stage with any of these keyboards uh, and it can be routed out the outputs of the, the keyboard as well. But what's also really cool is especially on CP and YC, there's a function so that whatever the digital audio input is, that you could use that mod lever to be the level for your, your computing device uh, audio resource. So you can actually have a separate volume control just for that iPad, that iPhone, or that computer. Yeah, I, I wanted to show because t- t- Tony did this, you know, I think my, my camera is pretty cool. So I, I this did is it more Mondo. poorly. Mine, mine didn't work <laughs> as well. This is the <laughs> app. Okay. And the last thing that connected to this, by the way, was a montage. Okay. So I have a YC in front of me and I'm just going to just right. show you very quickly. Yeah, that was my YC screen. Screen. This is. Get there. When I plug it in, it's going to see that I connected a, a YC to it. And it switches directly to YC. Now I have Amazing. access to thousands of YC sounds. I checked the other day. I said nearing 100,000. We're about 90,000 right now, and we constantly get new. So we'll have 100,000 in no time at all sounds up there for free on Sound Mondo. And you can put your own set list. So you can put set list together in there. So you could put your whole series of things on what you're going to be doing throughout your church service and switch them from your phone if you want. Amazing. So we've covered literally the entire gamut of I, I guess every possibility in a house of worship from the very Pretty small big. church, single player, mm-hmm. right. To 8,000 seat arena of a church <laughs> and, and multiple levels of performing and broadcasting all of, all of the different uses of technology, all of the different players and all of the different feature sets. And these three keyboards, keyboards cover it all. Yep. Yes, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And thanks everybody for listening today. It's a, you know, this is, these are rare instances when we get industry experts like this to, for you to put in front of you and you to ask questions. So we do not have any further questions at all. So I think we're going to wrap things up here. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank thank you, Blake. Thank Thank you. you. It's always, Uh, always, always awesome to, to do anything with you guys at full compass. It's funny. I look at your background. I was like, Wow, that's a really cool virtual background, and then no, yeah, yeah. No, that's, no, that's not a virtual background. That's real, and and then right that's over here we've got the the Rio sixteen. Uh, oh, cool! Rio yeah, yeah. We we've got all the latest, coolest technology. Yeah, this yeah, is what our, a beautiful place, man. It, I I haven't traveled in a while, but. Yeah. Anyway, it's just and thank you so much, Jim. You bet. Fortunately, I get to do it in the very quietest room of the of yeah. this over <laughs> over eighty thousand square foot building. Yeah, I so wish my room looked like that. <laughs> you and me both. So that's why the couch is there because you <laughs> know I, I spend a lot of time here. Jim, I want to see those fish swimming by out of one of those windows next time. I, I yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll have fish swimming by in, in the the aquarium back here. Uh, once again, thanks, guys. We're going to wrap things up, uh, folks. If you have any further questions. Um, feel free to email me at uh, jripp at fullcompass.com. That's jrip at fullcompass.com. And thank you, Yamaha, for this wonderful presentation and being, and Blake for the demos and Tony for the, the, the hands on player's point of view. Awesome. Thank Great you. workshop. Yeah. Thanks for having us. All right. We're going to put this one in the books, guys. Mm-hmm.